Hey everyone, so today for a self assessment, we're going to go over the musculoskeletal system. So it's a few A and P quick review and some mnemonics, so stay tuned for that. And then some tips, some health related tips. <laughs> so we start off with the bones. So, musculoskeletal. What comes in mind when it comes to musculoskeletal? In 10, the term musculoskeletal. Skeletal. Musculo, muscles. Skeletal is the bone. <laughs> so the bones. So a little, a little, a little dab about the bones. There are two hundred six bones in a body. Fun fact: there are about twenty six in our feet. Twenty six bones in our feet. So that, that that's taken into account of the two hundred six. So two hundred six bones in a body. I don't know how many are in the hands. You can do that, do some research. But one thing for sure, your foot is comprised of 26 bones. And then you have the muscles, skeletal muscles. So you have about 600 of those. So there are, so there are three types of muscles. So you have the cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, and the skeletal muscles. Now, if you were to categorize, try to categorize based on their appearance, well, cardiac, most the ca cardiac muscles they look like it's like stacked trees they are all like stacked trees with some circles in the middle so that's a nucleus you have the uh, the smooth smooth uh, muscles so it's like um, it's okay so it has a term it's called uh, fusiform there we go fusiform so it's more like a it's it just if you were to look at it on a microscope it's just it's like it's like a striated and speaking of striation, you have the skeletal muscles. So if you were to view them under the microscope, it looks like it has some striations. If you guys have eaten sashimi, you know those lines, those lines, those very distinguished lines. So if you haven't eaten sashimi, or if you have, then boom. That's how to remember the char characteristics of skeletal muscles. Okay, so it's a little deep about that. So there are some connective tissues. You have the cartilage. Tendons connects muscles to bones, ligaments, bone to bone, the bursae, the meniscus, and the fascia. I'm just gonna speed through all of this. And then again, you probably heard from lecture from oh, I don't know how many weeks ago, but the temporomandibular joint. The temporomandibular joint. <laughs> okay. So you have the shoulders, you have the elbows involved. Okay, so let's go over the movements. The range of motions. So you have flexion, so flex, flexion, extension, hyperextension, so it's like with it's outside of your normal limits. <laughs> you have rotation, internal rotation, exterior, external rotation, pronation, with pronation, this is pronation, supination. So think of supination, it's like you're holding a bowl of soup. I don't know what kind of soup we have in mind, but just think soup, soup, soup and nation. Holding a bowl of soup. Okay. Um, so you have inversion, inversion, protraction, retraction. Okay, you can look through that. But I want to focus more on the abduction and adduction. So let me put this down first. Abduction is abduction. That's when it's the extremities moves away. Right, away, ab. And then towards adduction. Adduction you move towards. Let me show you like a an interesting mnemonic that I have. Okay, so I'm not sure if you're gonna see the board. Can you see the board? Okay, good. So if you were to write both, if you were to write those two word, two terms in capital right so here's one way to remember if you were to think math that's what you have to remember so think math so if you were to uh, subtract uh, subtract subtract you move 
you're taking away. So if you're to subtract, you take away things, like five minus three. If you have five units, you take away three. Take away, abduction, remove, you take it away, away from the tetrad. Whereas abduction is pretty much self-explanatory because you just add, you just include words. Add, include words. You added words. Abduction, words. Abduction, away. That's for capital letters. If you're too much, And as I mentioned before, it's the most easiest. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to use a different color. Of course, both of them is start with A, right? And then it will turn. Pay attention to the second letter of E word. Alright? Now let's look closely. Let's bring it in closer. Look at this. Abduction. What's abduction? Away from. Look at the direction where the B is looking. Did you notice something? Yes. Look at the B. Look at the B in relevance to the A. What do you notice? Yes. The B is looking away from the A. So that's one way to remember it if you're to write it in lowercase. So, oops. B looks away from the A, abduction away from. Now look at D, abduction. Now what is the D? It's looking towards the A. Yeah, it's looking towards the A. So therefore, abduction is towards. <laughs> See, let me show you again. So, abduction. B is looking away from the A. It's away. Abduction is away. And look at the D in adduction. The first D is looking towards the A. So adduction is towards. See? He's a mnemonic. So easy. All right. All right, so let's keep moving. So, okay, so we're going to talk about the wrists and the hands and the hips and the knees, the spine. So know that there are 33 bones. Seven of them are cervical, 12 are thoracic. Five are lumbar, five are sacral, and about three or four for coccygeal. So that's your tailbone. Okay, so of course there's also some problems that can occur in the musculoskeletal system. One of which is osteoporosis. So we know osteo bone porosis, porous bone. So so as individuals age, like about about six or above, their bone density are kind of like deteriorating. So that's why they are most prone to prone to falls and all the stuff because the bone density decreases. So that's how you have those porous bones. That usually the treatment for that is you have to take more calcium and vitamin D to retain the calcium as well. And then another, so there's some other uh, related musculoskeletal conditions. Oh, geez. Um, so, so there's a whole list, if I can find it, if I can find it. Here we go, people. <laughs> because there's actually a lot of conditions involved. So, okay, so we have bursitis, carpal tunnel syndrome. So it affects the wrist. So if you're numerous frequency of typing, or if you're, a, if you're a teacher, you remember being a teacher where you have to staple, make sure if, you, if, you're, about, if you're about to submit your papers, make sure it's all stapled, otherwise, one, they're just gonna look over for all the documents and you don't know if you're gonna get a good grade or when you're gonna get a good grade, you're gonna be delayed because it's like papers everywhere, you, like you didn't staple it. And speaking of staple, who remembers stapling papers? Come on, your te professors, teachers, they probably staple, 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 staple. It may not be good for the wrist, so. Or those that are like, right, 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 right. You're using this a lot of times, so yeah, carpet, 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 car
duper trying to contract you. Okay, so I I watched like a commercial like this, where one way to tell if you're duper you have dupe what's this thing called? Dupe trying contract. So here's a flat surface. Okay, don't go like that. Here's your flat surface. If you can able to place your hand flat on the floor, then you're normal. But if you're to if someone asks you to place your your hand on the flat on the floor and then you have something like this or like this or like this or something like that that's a key sign of duplicate contraction I don't know if that commercial is still up but if you were to see that commercial on TV then you know then you have multiple sclerosis myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis we know that's an autoimmune osteoarthritis they talk about osteoporosis scleroderma scoliosis okay Kyphosis, scoliosis, and lordosis. Kyphosis. This is when you're hunched like this. Okay. I just think of chi rhymes with sus. So when you sign you like this. Or it's a kind of curvature when you sign. Yeah. If you're going to be locked in this position, it's called chi. Next is scoliosis. Scoliosis is like a unusual bent of, of, of the street. So, oh, okay, I can't. So, let's say this is the spine. So, if you're like, like that, like that, that's scoliosis. So, just think scoliosis starts with an S. S. Yes. Okay, I, oh, there we go. So, your spine. Again, spine starts with an S. Your spine resembles an abnormally S shaped. So I just think scoliosis, spine, abnormally S shaped. And then you have lordosis. Lordosis looks more like a kind of like hunchback. Yeah, so you kind of like a hunchback. So you might notice it's like, oh, I'm brain dead. So I just think of lordosis like, oh. Yeah, this is another way to remember it. <laughs> oh gosh. Right. And then of course rheumatoid arthritis. You've probably heard that a lot on television and you might see a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. So okay, so I think here's a couple of more conditions. Okay, but I'm gonna talk about gout. Inflammation. It was inflammation of the joints, but we know what causes it. I'm going to tell you right now. Uric acid levels. The amount of uric acid, you're in a more, you are more prone to getting gout. So, what can cause gout, y'all? Can you guess? Like any, what people do? Human behavior that causes gout? Okay. So we know that alcohol. That's, I'm gonna talk about alcohol later. So I'm, in case you didn't know, in case you didn't know, I'm a Filipino individual. So, so for my Filipino friends, this dish looks should look familiar. Have you tried this? So we call it as mung bean stew, mung bean stew, or as we call it in, as we call it balatong. So yeah, this is, you know that balatong. So. When you cook, so, so here's a tip if you're to cook. So usually when you cook balatung or mung bean soup in English, you buy these, split mung bean soup. Look what you notice. You see these green pods, these green shells? If you were to cook it, biggest tip, boil it, boil it with water, pour some water in, boil it, then you put in the beans. You have to get rid as much green shells as possible. Why would you do that? Okay, let me tell you why. These green shells are filled with uric acid. And as I mentioned earlier, increased consumption of uric acid will cause gout. So, uh, so when my dad usually cooked balatung, he boiled out the, boiled the beans and then he has to like, has to 
well, hot water, hot water, put them cold water, creates a little shock so the green shells will come out easily and then it would just throw it into the bucket. I don't know how many times, as long as there's, there's as long as there's not even a trace of green shells on it. So I don't know because we usually use a, like a big pot. So like around six, seven times until, until it's like you can see minimal to no green at all. And then he probably should have learned that a while ago. So <laughs> that's why I think this is one of the treatments for, for gout is alupurinol. So yeah, this is my dad's medication. So alupurinol, 300 milligrams. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, so he's going to, this is this is med maintenance medicine. So because of his eating habits, <laughs> getting used to like, eating some of these, he's now going to take this for life. For life. That's why you have to change your eating habits around. Otherwise, you can end up spending your natural born, born life taking this alupernol every single day until the day you die. And uh, let's not go there. I don't want to follow my dad's footsteps in regards to this. And back to the alcohol because, oh my goodness, every Filipino party, alcohol is involved. <laughs> Luckily, I am not that part of the spectrum. I'm like, hey, don't need it. So, please, alcohol users, please try not to use alcohol. Ease up on the Heineken, ease up on the Budweiser, ease up on the Corona. Or for my Filipino friends, ease up on the Red Horse, ease up on the San Miguel. Not the Jacka, please. Not, not, not that Jack alcohol, please. Just in moderation. In moderation or nothing at all. For me, I just prefer nothing at all. I'm 27. I'm like this close to 28. And I, never, I would never drink. Let me be your role model. <laughs> okay, so we gone through that. So of course, range of motions. I probably discussed about that. And let me see if I can discuss about something else. Okay, so the tries are covered that. So, so in the lab, you probably be able to talk to do range of motion, how to assess. Use during use resistance to check their nerves. <laughs> so I guess that's about it. I guess if there's another test. So we have the Phelan test. So again, it's like, it looks like this. Not this. <laughs> this. You're not doing. You're not using your fingers. Okay, that's to check, check if you have clubbing. This we're checking if you have carpal tunnel syndrome. So just think, clubbing, carpal tunnel syndrome, clubbing. All right, so so Dr. Joe or whoever you have professor for the health assessment will go more into detail. So just so just basically a bit of the anatomy, physiology, some mnemonics on, to consider, and some helpful tips. Get rid of the greens, so you won't get these. So I guess that's gonna conclude my overall part so thanks for watching if you got questions don't be don't be afraid to send me an email or yeah so have fun in today's in this week's lecture of the musculoskeletal system all right you got this guys Aloha.